It's time for this week's Uplift. Encouraging words from two ordinary guys that want you and others to find the freedom in Christ that's available to everyone. So sit back and enjoy Uplift, brought to you by the Fulcrum Center. Visit our website at thefulcrumcenter.org to learn more. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us for Uplift. I'm Phil Bliss. Hey, I'm Ian Thornton. It's good to see you tonight. Great to be here. Are you talking to me? I think I'm talking to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yes, man. It's really great to be here, Phil. It is. Good to see you and good to see everybody out there, too. Yeah, you know, it's it's the end of August. And it, it was a nice day today. But I think some of those nice days are coming to an end. But we do live in Ohio. So you know what that <laughs> means. There will be a second summer followed by the first winter. Then we'll have an early spring followed by the rest of winter. And then we might have another third summer and then finish out winter and then finish out winter and finish out winter. And then we'll finally have, we'll skip spring and we'll go right into summer. Yeah, I, I know. Yeah, I, I'm, I mean, yeah, you're right. It's the end of August, you know. Yeah, right. <laughs> it, it, the end of August, I, I, I have my snow shovel in the truck. <laughs> <laughs> you just never right. know. <laughs> you just never know in Ohio. Oh, I know. You know, I, I, I guess there was a thunderstorm this morning. I didn't hear it. <laughs> it I, makes two of us, so there wasn't. <laughs> I, I woke up and I said, hey, it rained. And Tanya's like, you didn't hear that? <laughs> like, nope, slept right through it. <laughs> yep, I didn't hear it. Slept like a baby. But yeah, so the, we got some cooler days coming, but yeah. you know, I appreciate the fall. And I and do too. But you, do, you know, we live in, in a unique area. In, in Ohio, yeah. So I mean, you yeah. know, just, we live right in the valley, and, right? And right. that's 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 its own dimension, kind of just you know, weather-wise and and in many other ways, it's just its own dimension. Oh, boy, it really things, is. The things we could say about the valley, you know, but uh, maybe another night. It it well, it it's yeah, and you know, it's a really um, it's its own unique region. Yeah, it is. And and spiritually speaking, we all live in our own unique region. Mm-hmm. And and I think you're I think you're right, Phil. I think it would be great to talk about spiritually some of the things that we um, have experienced, some of the things that we face mm. um, here in in our region that I'm sure would be encouraging and empowering and beneficial to to many of those who are listening and watching um, around the world. Yeah, because we, we all live in our, our own unique region, you know, and, and I think that's one of the things for us that, that we really need to remember is that God has placed us where we are. That's so true. You know, and not and by we, mistake. It is not. It is not. And we are not just placed there on purpose, but we are also um, empowered hmm. to reclaim and to take that region and that territory in which we've been placed. And uh, so I, I think you hit the nail right on the head to be able to talk about that one evening. I think oh, it would be great. That would be great. It would be. Wouldn't it be a great one? Yeah. That would be fun. But you know what? Now that you've brought that up, it just makes me think how how we live our lives living in the midst of this amazing God who has created everything and has complete control over everything. Yeah. And there are times when we still say, and I even said it today, I didn't see this one coming, but you know what? God did. <laughs> yeah, he it did. doesn't surprise him he at did. all. No. And you're right; we no, don't see these things coming, things that happen to us. But God does, yeah. and He has our best interest in mind all the time. He does because He loves us. He, yeah, he, so he, incredibly much. He really does. He does. He's He's not surprised by these things, and um, we get to trust that he's already in it and he's already there. Yeah. So that's awesome. It, but he loves us. He does. And he loves us. You said something in your sermon this past week when you said, and I don't remember exactly how you said it, so you might have to help me, but just think of how different your life would be if you knew how much you were loved. Is that correct? Or yeah, it, it? Um, it, it was. If I can just re- rephrase yeah, it. Yeah. It was, um, how would your life be different if you believed yes. how deeply God loved you? Now let that sink in for a minute. Because <laughs> it's still sinking in here. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that the truth, though? It is. because, And that's what I was kind of getting at. 
is that we say, well, where did that guy, I didn't see that one coming. No, we're humans. Mm -hmm. But God did see that thing coming. He saw that diagnosis coming. He saw that that problem financially coming. He saw that tree fall down in your yard coming, and whatever it may be, your basement flooding or... Yeah, right? Right. But transition, um, unexpected X, whatever that yeah. is, you know, um, those things that often, like what you said, that often can take us by surprise um, that we don't see. But if we stop for a moment and believe and know and trust that God loves us, and he is going to Romans eight twenty eight. Yeah. In all things work for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. If we just latch on to that belief that we are loved, yeah, it would change our lives. It would. You know, I'm just, just I'm just reminded of a, a situation that our family faced um, soon after we moved here to Ohio that um, was different for um, our family it was it was was not a situation that we had ever faced before okay and and it sounds it sounds odd especially when i tell you what happened but um you know with seven kids emma our youngest was the first one to ever get stitches which is <laughs> like are you kidding me <laughs> well and it's wow. no no <laughs> <laughs> no, we didn't buy all of our kids plastic bubbles and they didn't live. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, that's not at all. But it was just, it, it's just the way it was. You know, Emma was the first one. and But when that situation happened, I, I can remember, man, I was I was out in the fields, um, out, on, out on the farm, and um, Julie was at, we were living in the camper at okay. the time. And um, Julie was there at the camper and Emma just constant daredevil. You know, she's just doing whatever. And so there was a, a handle that you would grab a hold of to walk up into the camper. Okay. Well, Emma just thought it was awesome. You know, to her, it looked like a jungle gym. Okay. So she's swinging on this thing and so she falls off. Well, mm-hmm. just sitting down at the, the base of the steps, we had a little birdhouse that was a church and little metal steeple. Well, she landed on that thing face first and it ripped her cheek open. Ooh. And so it caught her by surprise. Yeah. She never saw it coming. Was she told not to swing on the <laughs> on the on the railing? Yeah, yes, she sure, was. Sure, but but she it, it so caught her off guard. It was one of those she did not expect that at all, and and to watch Julie's reaction and how she was handling it, how she was being taken care of, and and then you know Ian Thomas ran out in the field and got me, and I came back in, and how I stepped into that situation of taking care of my child that something unexpected happened to them was to let them know that she's loved Mm -hmm. she's okay to reassure her to tell her what's going to happen here's how we're going to work everything's going to be all right Mm -hmm. i don't see how this is all going to get stitched up or whatever but i know that it's going to be okay right God is different. He steps in and he knows what's going on. He's already there. He was there when Emma fell, you know, mm-hmm. and, and and he was already in the hospital room when she was going to have to have the plastic surgery and the stitches and, and all of that to, to, to have everything mended. So God already knows those things. But do we believe that he's already there because he loves us that much? And if he, we do believe that, how would our life be different? Mm-hmm. Well... I'm going to try to answer that. And awesome. I, I'm sure you probably have some ideas too. But let's think about this. If we believed it, when you get that, or you a family member gets that diagnosis of something bad, mm. some medical problem, mm-hmm. okay? If you believe that God loves you so much, there's many things that can happen. The person could be healed. Yes. The person could, it could end in death. Mm-hmm. which would be ch- a tragedy. But knowing that God loves you, it's not the end of the world. He's got a plan. This has been worked into that plan. He wasn't caught off guard. And if you trust, you might ha- not have that tightness in your chest that you might have. Yeah. You might have You might have it, but it might be less. You might recover in, say, two or three days instead of two or three months. You're still going to be human. You're still going to have those feelings that, why is this happening? But you're going to get past it a lot quicker. 
Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, because in, in that in that love that God has for us, and um, there's healing. Yeah. In that. Yeah. Um, but sometimes it, it's so hard to recognize. Right. Um, and and I and at times maybe accept is is another word, but it's so hard to recognize at points and times because we can be so used to reacting certain ways when the unexpected happens um, or something that we don't like takes place um, even mm -hmm. if we see it coming down the road um, we know that this is whatever it is is coming and we don't like this but I'm gonna act and react a certain way so so at points honestly j and just to talk about my life there, there's been times and in, in times in my life when I'm just I, I see these things coming or something happens unexpectedly and my reaction is out of my own works and honestly yeah. I have to step in and do something about this because yeah. obviously yeah. God's not taking care of this You're right right so so to get to that point of of living in trust and belief that God loves me there's some things in my own mind that have to be unlearned unlearned yeah um, another word that just popped in my head was disassembled yeah yeah. So yeah, exactly. So then, what do I do with that? Yeah. You know that's interesting because it is the experiences that we have that build up that learning and that assembling uh -huh. that lead us to the next time it happens or something similar happens. Oh, I jump in. I know what to do. I I, you know. <laughs> right. But right. What we have to unlearn is when it happens, knowing that God loves us. I don't have to jump in. I don't have to take action. God, what are we doing here? God, what's the next step? When you learn that, yeah. whoa, I can take a step back. And that's where you start to not have that tightness in your chest. You start to have that getting past it a little bit quicker sort of thing. Hmm. Because the Lord is moving. And as you said, yeah. healing. Yeah. But getting to that point of where okay the next time something happens i'm going to be ready and i'm going to i know i'm loved i'm going to have god just handle it or help me handle it whatever it may be how do you get to that point you know what i think it starts with prayer it starts with daily prayer anticipate it coming and ask god before it even happens to have you be ready for whatever comes. Yeah, that that time in, in prayer is, um, if I can say, almost like early preparation. Yeah, you know, it, it yeah it does. It sets it sets our minds on on a course. Um, it can reset our minds. Mm -hmm. um, but really, that time with the Lord, um, because prayer is communication. You know, we've talked about that. It, prayer is communication with with God. It, it is not a um, hospital list or laundry list of things that you're going to present to the Lord and then say Amen and get up and walk away. It's really that communication. And so, even to you know, Phil, when you were just talking about um, being in that position, you you had even given questions and you had asked questions of the Lord. So, what do we? What's going on here? So, what? Right. You know, and and so those questions. That's prayer. Right, right. And so it really is. It's like getting in a point in a place of, of in a space with the Lord at rest and just asking him, hey, so what, what's going on today? Hey, he may tell you and he may not. Right. But at the same time, you've already connected with him. Right, right. So your hearts are connected. Your spirit is connected with his spirit. Right. And, and the gut reaction becomes not yeah. stepping in. It becomes looking up. To the yeah, Lord. yeah, power and patience. Yeah. Or, or pulling back and waiting, but waiting with him. Right. Resting right. with him, yeah. And, you know, I, I really am drawn to what Jesus said in Matthew 6, I think it was, maybe 7, uh, but do not worry. Right. You know, do not worry about right. today, for today will take care of itself. And he goes on to speak about how the birds, they find food. The animals... In the wilderness, they find food. Yeah, if the lilies are clothed. Right, yeah. the lilies too, right. And just God, because God loves them, but he loves us even more. Yes. He takes yeah. care of them because he loves them. Oh, and how much more he loves us. He's going to take care of us. Mm -hmm. But that 
initial reaction has to be with the Lord and not with your own trying to fix it yourself. Right. And I'm going to tell you, I'm the first one to stand in line to say, I often try to fix it myself. <laughs> and so I'm glad we're having this conversation. It, it, it is a great reminder, isn't it? It is. So the next time something like this happens, I'm not going to say, oh, no, what am I going to do now? I'm going to say, okay, Lord, what, what do we do? How do we handle this situation? We. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know, because, sure, God can do anything. With God, all things are possible. Right. But we also have to keep in mind that God wants us involved. He does. He does. And, and it's not like, well, God will just take care of me. You know, okay, yes, he will. But he wants you involved. You know, he doesn't want you sitting on the roof of your house while the floodwaters are rising and say, I don't need that helicopter or that boat because God's going to take care of me. He wants you involved. Ex- exactly. And, and two, th- that involvement is relationship. Exactly. And that, which is the whole reason he even created <laughs> exactly. the earth to begin right. with and, and, and you know, breathe life into, right. into Adam. It, it, it all started because, because he wanted relationship. And it's not that God, and, that, and God's not looking to be hands off and handling everything for you. He wants to do it with you and, and to do these things together. So it's like, you know, for me, what would I do or how would my life be different if I further realized the depths of God's <sighs> love for me would wow. would probably be to to further step out in faith um, with something that he wants to do with me yeah. to reach someone else. Right, right. Yeah, you know, see, just, and that's good training. Exactly. That's good training. So you don't have to wait for a situation to happen. Yes. When you do what you just said, step out knowing, living life loved every single day. Yes. It's good training for when that unexpected thing happens. Oh, well, God's got this. Yeah. Yeah. Not just saying it, really believe in it. And then watch it happen. Yeah. You know, watch it happen. And, and oh, that just man. becomes, yeah, then it, it's That's the coolest amazing. thing because it it's is. like, you know, we we love reading in, in the scriptures about the, the miraculous things that took place, everything from, you know, the, the splitting of the Red Sea and, and all mm-hmm. to to um, the handkerchiefs that, that Paul sent out and the, and the sick were mm-hmm. healed and, and everything right, in, right. in Acts. And so you just, you know, to, to watch and read all of those things. But it's just like, you know what, that's that's a life awaiting for each one of us mm. is, is to be out there and watching God's love for us flow through us into the lives of others that he sent his son to die for. Yes, and, yes. You know, and when they meet... <laughs> That God that loves them so much, yeah. and watch their life change. You know, it, it's our own Bible story, <laughs> you is. know, that just unfolds and, and is written, and, and we get to be a part of it. Um, but it, it's all founded in in God's love and His love for us, and our belief that that is true. Mm. And mm-hmm. and and so so often it, it's at that point that the gears of the mind start to grind because we just like, man, God would God loves me that much? Mm-hmm. I, I don't get that. I, I don't see that. I don't know how that. Or, or there's some um, that have had such a difficult relationship with their earthly father mm-hmm. that they, yep. they just cannot relate to that at all. And, right. And, to a and, loving father. To a, right. Right. And, and there's really a, a point of deliverance that yeah. needs to happen there um, yeah. because that was not what God intended no. at all. Right. And something that I've been thinking about the last couple of days, and it kind of fits into this, mm. is God has been telling me, and not for me personally, but just so that I can get this message out there for whomever may need, he may need to hear it, but probably for me too, but you don't always have to know how God does it. That's right. And by that, I mean, like, how did he split the Red Sea? I don't know. Okay. Right. You could, there's probably a very good scientific explanation because God uses science. Or he just did it. I don't care which way it is. <laughs> right. And it doesn't matter. Right. Okay. So how's God going to change this person so that they become a strong believer? I don't know. Right. But I'm going to do my part to see that it that God can work through me to make it happen. Yeah. 
I don't need to know. Once I need to know, that puts it back on me and it takes it off of God. Mm -hmm. And God wants to be on him. That's right. Because we don't have the mind he has. That's right. right. Our mind is very finite. His mind is very infinite. It is so. It is. It is so much about trusting him. Yeah. In in each one of our situations, in each one of our circumstances, and um, and two, it, in each one of our relationships. Um, and there again, I I don't know who this is for tonight, but but there there is just relationship that um, it is so strained, and and it has given given a very wrong picture of who God is, mm-hmm. and um, and so we just. You know, Phil and I, towards the end of the show, we'll, we'll pray for everybody, mm-hmm. and um, and we'll be praying for you about this, and and that you're able to see and understand. You know what? And I prayed for about myself, and and I had a great relationship with my dad, but but there's depth. You, you talk about God being infinite. Mm-hmm. There's so much depth to who He is that I don't understand and I don't know, right. but that He wants me to know. And so I think it's it would be good for us to just pray for for every one of us just to um, understand uh, a little bit more about the depth of God's love for us and and how um, He wants to step in to our lives and show Himself powerful and strong and um, show us His grace and His mercy, so that um, we can be that light or or that example um, for others who are just so hurt and so lost in a in a dying world. And I have seen so many times where he's taken people that when I was younger, I would have considered them lost. Hmm. You know, and that was my own misunderstanding. But now I see people like that and I see how God has changed them. I don't know how he did it. Yeah. But he has. And it has given me hope. For people that I know that I would like to say, well, I just gave up on that person because they're just not going to listen. No, that's not on me. Yeah, that's right. That's on God. That's right. Mm -hmm. So continue to pray for those people that you feel like they're just not going to listen no matter how many times you try. Right. If it's your child, your grandchild, your spouse, your parents, a cousin, a friend, keep praying. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's always opportunity for yeah. someone to believe. Oh, absolutely. You know, it, it it really is, and it's and it's not our job to make them yeah. believe, yeah. Um, but at at points certainly to live the example and to live the life in front of them, so they have yep. an opportunity yep. to see yep. the reality of who God is, um, yep. and they have an opportunity to believe how much God loves them, and and for sure, there would be some life changes. You know, yes. When, yes. when somebody realizes how much God loves them, then life changes. And, and because there's an infinite depth to how much God loves us, there's always opportunities for, for our life, for our belief to grow and then our life to change. Right. Absolutely. It's just, I love how you said it. It's the best sermon anybody can give mm. is to live your life. Loved. That's right. You don't have to be a pastor to give a sermon. Live your life knowing that God loves you, and that will be your sermon to the world. That's right. Mm -hmm. And and trust me, it will happen because people will come up to you and say, what is your secret? What are you doing? Yeah. They'll say, I can tell you're a a man of God or a woman of God. And then say, yeah, because God loves me. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) That's all you got to say. That's exactly right. Oh, it, it, it will happen. It will. It really will. Because I've seen it happen mm-hmm. in my own life. And, and that's it. You know, and, and it's, there are things that we have seen, Phil, there's, there's things that God has, has shown us um, in the lives of others. Yeah. Um, but, but honestly, the one thing that we, we continually go back to is what he's done in us. Yeah. In us individually. You know, and, and for us, and it's like that. That's that's the only real testimony that I have mm. that um, that I can share, or that um, that God would show is just what He's done in me, and um, mm. and it's it's constant. Mm-hmm. It's a constant yeah, um, growth. It's a constant change. Yeah, right. It's a constant um, admission of what I need to. Let go. It's kind of like you know, I, 
you know, basement flooded the whole nine yards, you know, and so I've been out down in, in the basement on the last for the last couple of weeks on, on my hands and knees <laughs> digging out concrete. Mm-hmm. And that's just the way it's been. It, but in even preparing the old concrete for the new to come in and to attach to, there's mm-hmm. this process of, of going through and, and taking a wire brush and just scrubbing the side of the old concrete because the new concrete needs something to attach to. Okay. And, and that new concrete will not hold to anything that is broken or loose. <laughs> right? Yeah. Okay, so guess what I've been doing? I've been tearing out all the loose and the broken pieces of that old concrete so that the new could come in and have a significant hold that will not let go. Wow. And that's what God does with us. Yes. Yes. Takes that wire brush, and it may be painful. (laughs) Yes. But he makes it because he loves us so much, and he wants it to make sure that the new can hold. Exactly. And it it really is a belief that the wire brush is the best thing to use. Yeah. Yeah. And belief that, that God loves us and is willing to remove that old brokenness and that those pieces that are loose so that he has something solid that's there. Right. And and you just believe that that you know what this is the best for me and you, you said it earlier. He has the best in mind mm-hmm. for each one that he has breathed life into. And yeah. and that's me and you and, and that's you. And let's finish with this statement, okay? Gotcha. We're running out of time. But I know there's probably someone saying, oh, yeah, yeah, great, but God doesn't love me. Hmm. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. As Ian just said, the, he loves everyone he has breathed life into. And if you're living, take your pulse, breathe out, feel, feel your, your air coming out of your nose or your mouth, however you have to do it. God loves you. Yes, he does. God loves you. Let him show you how much he loves you. Yes, that's good. Take it to him. Ask him to show you how much he loves you. Ask. 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 He will do it. He will. He will. And and then you can begin. And if you already know that, then believe it, receive it, and live it. Mm. That's good. As we said tonight, rewind if you have to. Take it to God in prayer and let him work with you day by day, knowing that you're loved, so that when those situations do come up, the knee-jerk reaction isn't to try to handle it yourself. It is to take it to God. That's right. Right. Handle it with him. Yeah. Yeah. Let him step in. Let him step in and be a part of it. And he's already there. He's already in the situation. Acknowledge him and walk with him through it. Acknowledge him and walk with him through it. Live. Life loved. I love that. Live life loved. Yes. Live great. life loved. Live life loved. Yeah. It'll change. It will. It will change. It will change. It will. Man, what a great show. Yeah, it was. It was good. Thank you all for being with yeah, us tonight. Thank you so much. We hope you enjoyed it. And yeah. I want to pray for everybody first. Yes. Before let's we head let's out. pray. Okay. Sounds good. Heavenly Father, dear God, we come before you, and God, we are just thankful. We are thankful for your love for us. But Father, I ask you, in the name of your Son, Jesus, that you will just make your love more real to us than ever. Mm-hmm. Father, I pray your Holy Spirit just rise up within each one of us, and that he is the conduit of your love that will just pour out upon us. Father, whether it brings tears to our eyes or makes our knees weak, Father, that we would just understand more today than we did yesterday how much you love us. And Father, with that understanding, may our hearts be putty. May they be moldable, shaped in your hands. And Father, all of the doubts and the fears Father, all of the condemnation that we have heard over the years, we ask that your Holy Spirit remove it, that you deliver us from those things, and that, Father, we hear you whisper how much you love us and that you care for us. 
And, Father, that our ears are guarded against the voice of the enemy. But, Father, I ask for restoration to those who have not had the the best model as a father. And those, at points, memories would be erased. But that you would bring to them the truth of a good, good father. Father, lead them to who you are and allow them to experience your love today, tomorrow, and in all the days to come. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. That was beautiful, Ian. Thank Amen. You. Well, thank you all for joining in tonight. Yes, thanks for spending time with us. Yes, we will be back again next week. We will. And with I have bells on. We. <laughs> Maybe Phil. Well, he'll have bells on, but <laughs> it's not Christmas time yet, so it's just all. We're just getting so. ready. <laughs> I have a feeling we might carry on this conversation a little more, possibly. Yeah, yeah, it's it's good. Yeah, yeah, but it's we'll good. See. We'll see where the Lord leads us. But uh, Amen. Until then, you know how to reach us. Yes. Prayer at fulcrumradio.org. Uh, mm-hmm. You can go to the fulcrumcenter.org, fulcrumradio.org, or you yep. can find us on Facebook. You can leave a comment. Be sure to like, share, and and subscribe, and all that good stuff too, because that just helps more people see what yeah. we have. Yeah, what out there. Mm-hmm. And what what God is doing. Yeah, that, so that would share be great. with someone who might need to to know that God. Yeah, loves them. bless somebody with it. Right. So we'll Amen. see you next week. All right. Have a good evening. All right.